Welcome to Chapter 6 on Prepositions. We're kind of building up our repertoire of words, being able to work with present active indicative verbs. And now we've got the nouns down, the masculine, feminine, neuter nouns in the second declension and first declension. We've learned the cases, and the cases will come into play here with these prepositions. One little secret about Greek is it's not the big words in Greek that get you. It's the little ones. And these prepositions can be tricky at times, so we really need to master these as they're very prevalent in Greek. Indeed, in modern Greek, the preposition has even bumped out the whole date of case. We'll see them in prepositional phrases, relating nouns to nouns, relating nouns to verbs. We'll also see them tagged onto the front end of verbs. So the prepositions have a way of getting around. And so we need to focus on the prepositions. We first need to start by asking the question, what is a preposition? Usually these are small words that relate to words or ideas in time, like before, after, during, while, or space, in, on, over, under, into, out of, beside, around, etc., or logic, because of, by, against. And these little connecting words help us to clarify cases sometimes, extend and intensify verbs, even alter the meaning of a verb. So these words will be found all over and they'll play their roles relating one set of words to another. For example, he went into the house. Into is the preposition. Into the house is called a prepositional phrase. The house is considered the object of the preposition. So, into the house tells location. He went before the meeting. Before is the preposition, and it tells temporally when he went in. So, it actually is like an adverbial modifier telling you when the verb happened. He came because of the word. Because is the preposition, and it tells you the reason why he came, the cause of his coming. So that's more a logical connection. Prepositions usually are combined into what are called prepositional phrases. A prepositional phrase is a string of closely connected words that functions as a syntactical unit. Usually it plays the role of an adjectival or adverbial role in the sentence. So you have a preposition plus the object of the preposition. An example of that would be upon the roof. The roof is the object of the preposition. Upon is the preposition. Beside the tree. The tree is the object of the preposition. Beside is the preposition. After the song. After is the preposition. The song is the object of the preposition. This same preposition plus the object of the preposition format will be found in Greek also. Now, the prepositions are associated with cases in Greek. So each preposition has a favorite case or sometimes two or three cases. The prepositions often clarify, extend, and even modify the root meaning of the case. And this is true in English somewhat. We've, we would say, under him, not under he. So we use the accusative even in English, under him not he. Another issue comes up with case that normally we translate the genitive of 
and we translate the data of 2 by 4 at width. But when you have the preposition with these cases, you don't use those keywords of and 2 by 4. So just go with the meaning of the preposition. Many of the prepositions have overlapping fields of meaning, and so some of them will be almost synonymous. I have a hard time saying words are totally synonymous, but they'll be overlapping in meaning, and it'll be hard to differentiate them sometimes in terms of their meaning. So be, be careful not to dissect the prepositions too strictly, because they do have quite wide areas of meaning. Ah, yes. Remember the slide when we first did the cases? This locational kind of visual will be very helpful in thinking about the prepositions that identify with the accusative, dative, and genitive. You'll notice that the prepositions do not come with the nominative, only with the oblique cases, the genitive, dative, and accusative. The accusative is a case of movement toward into. The dative is a more in case, and the genitive will be found with prepositions that are characterized by movement away from or out of separation. So just another way to look at the cases as we prepare to jump into the prepositions. Our first preposition is apo. It means from, of, because of, or by. We'll usually translate it like from, and it comes with the genitive case. Interestingly, the genitive case is the case of separation and fits well with the preposition apo. An example of that is apo to nomu, from the law. You can see the article there, too, tells you it's a genitive, nomu, from the root noun, nomos, so from the law. A second example is af humon, from you, an interesting transformation of the preposition apa. A third example is op autu, means from him. The autu, you can tell from the Omicron upsilon ending, is a genitive form, from him. Now, as we look at af humon, we note that if a preposition ends in a vowel and it's followed by a word that begins with a vowel, and also has the rough breathing, the final vowel in the preposition drops out and the P actually compensates by going up to a fee. So with the rough breathing and a vowel following a vowel final preposition, the consonant actually compensates for the dropping of the vowel. Now you'll notice in op out too that there's a smooth breathing and the word that follows also begins with a vowel, and so the omicron just drops out and is replaced by an apostrophe there. So this is rather typical, and you just have to be aware that these kind of vowel droppings happen. Our next preposition with the genitive case is ek, and it means from, out of, of, because of, and it takes a genitive. An example of this is ek tes basileas. It means out of the kingdom. Another example is ex uranu, means from heaven. You see that the vowel initial uranu causes the kappa to go to an exe. No surprises there. We're used to those vowel initial nouns impacting the preposition that goes before them. What is the difference between exegesis and isogesis? Exegesis means reading ek out of the text. Isogesis, which we'll 
see later, means reading into the text. And so exegesis and isogesis are based on those prepositions ex and ace, out of and into. Now you remember from our last slide that ek means from and apo means from. So they overlap in meaning. Some try to distinguish ek is meaning out of, that is out of from the midst of something, whereas apo means away from the edge of something. So ek kind of coming out of the midst of something from the middle and apo meaning away from the edge of something. Again, context will really determine what the meaning of the from is. And you've got to pay first attention to the context rather than trying to read this distinction into it. Our next preposition works with the dative. En means in, on, at, when, among, and comes with the dative. It's interesting that this word en is used very frequently as the most frequently used preposition in the New Testament. And it's also interesting that because of the power of this word en, the dative actually drops out in the modern Greek, and a lot of times the word en is used to approximate what used to be the dative case. But in Koine Greek, where we are, we'll have both en and the dative. An example is found in en tais cardiais, means in the hearts. Another preposition with the dative is soon. Soon means with. And an example of that in Greek is soon to angelo means with the angel. Keep your eye on this soon as it'll be tagged onto the front of many words like synagogue, the synagogue, a place that you come together with. Synthesis, bringing ideas together with. And verbs like sunago. So soon frequently finds itself tagged onto the front of other words. Now a couple accusative pronouns. Ace means into, to, in, among, or for, and it's used with the accusative case. An example is ace, tain, oikion, petru, into Peter's house. A second preposition that takes the accusative is pros. It means to, toward, or with, and it is also used with the accusative. Pros. Tus mathetas means to the disciples. Tus mathetas, you'll notice it takes the ho masculine article on the first declension noun, mathetes because mathetes itself, while a first declension noun, is also masculine, similar to prophetes. Now we've got four prepositions that take two cases. Dia, with the genitive, means through, by, or during. Check out the English word diameter, goes through the middle of the circle. An example is dia Jeremiu to prophetu through Jeremiah the prophet. Dia also occurs with the accusative, meaning because of. And an example of that is dia ton logon, meaning because of the word. Dia also ends in a vowel, so when it's followed by a word with a vowel, it looks like this. De auton. On account of him. The alpha drops out because of the alpha initial auton. 
Our second two-case preposition is kata. With the genitive, it means down or against. An example is kata to lau, which means against the people. Kata with the accusative means according to or during. So in the title of the book you'll see Kata Yoanain or according to John. Another example that's a little interesting is Kath Hemeran means during a day. You'll notice that the alpha drops out because of the initial eta which has a rough breathing which causes the tau to compensate to a theta. Kat auton, according to him, also just drops the alpha because of the alpha initial auton follows. And notice it has a smooth breathing, so there's no compensation needed with the tau. Our third two case preposition is meta. It's frequent in English in things like metaphysical or metamorphosis. Meta, with the genitive, means with, and is very similar to what we've seen with soon, which also means with. An example of this is meta yesu to nazarayu with Jesus of Nazareth. Met out to means with him. And you'll notice the alpha drops out because of the alpha initial on the following word, but because there's a smooth breathing, there's no compensation of the tau. Now meta with the accusative means after. And so we have meth hemeras hex or after six days. Hex, hexagon, means six. Notice the meth, which dropped the alpha from meta, and then because of the rough breathing initial vowel that followed, it compensated by taking the tau up to a theta, meth. The final two-case preposition is peri. In the genitive, it means for or concerning. An example of this is peri ton dua adelphone, concerning the two brothers. You could say the dynamic duo. In the accusative, peri means around or about, like perimeter, something that goes around the border. An example of this is peri tain Aletheon, about the truth. There is one three-case preposition, epi. There'll be another preposition that'll also run with all three cases as well, but epi for now. Epi in the genitive means on or over. So, for example, epi geis, on earth. At P with the dative means on, at, or against. So, for example, pater, epi, huio, kai, huios, epi, patri, father against a son, and son against a father. At P with the accusative means on, to, toward, against. Epi tus mathetas autu means to his disciples. Now when you look at this, the epi for the genitive is on over, 
fp with the date of is on at against and you can see kind of the date of flavoring there with remember two by four at with the at and the against being close kind of with the date of and then the accusative having on with a to or toward bent to it which fits the direction of the accusative in our earlier diagram so for all three a p means on and then it's varied with over for the genitive at against in the dative or to or toward in the accusative so all we start with on and then vary from there the prepositions often specify things in terms of location and so this diagram kind of helps to locate the prepositions in a kind of a spatial orientation on the top you see epi means on over or against kind of sitting on the top of things opposed to epi which is on over you have kata on the bottom right kata is against and down according to from the bottom pushing against down on the left hand side coming into the circle you see the pros which means to kind of to the boundary and with and you see ace entering from the left into to in opposite that going out on the right you see apo from kind of the boundary from and ek meaning out of or from and that ek coming out of the midst of the circle coming out of the middle of it in the middle of the circle you've got the word n the most frequently used preposition of all of them it means in at when and several other things and then with a line going through the whole circle you have dia which means through or because of up in the upper right corner you've got soon meaning with and meta meaning with and after so this preposition is kind of the circle of life for the prepositions and gives their spatial orientation prepositions are also used for time and also used for logical connections as well now I've not really got all these moves so I'll just have to explain it to you and uh, you do the moves for this um, you got more flexibility than I do now in these moves your muscles will actually help your memory alright epi is our first preposition and to signal this we're gonna pat ourselves on top of the head okay so epi pat yourself on top of the head peri you're gonna make like a halo with your index finger or your right hand going around your head so that'll be peri means around so we've got epi patting ourselves on the head peri circling our head with our index finger pointed like a halo around our head for pros we take our index finger to our heart that's to our heart ace then our hands continue pushing into the heart and this is into and we collapse our chest with our shoulders on both sides sinking in our chest sinking in and our shoulders drooping over dia then continues the push of our finger through our heart out through the back so it's through the dia the finger goes out through the back and then on the way in since we've had three times pushing into our heart we take both arms and we hug ourselves and that's n for in so for n we hug ourselves ek so we're gonna actually turn the direction now and have our finger coming out of our heart and then apo 
the fingers of both hands move out further still from our hearts, extending both of our arms with our two index fingers pointing outward. And then as both hands are going pointing outward from the heart, then kata. And kata, we're going to take the two palms of our hands and press them in front of ourselves. So the two palms of our hands pressing against one another. It's actually kind of a calisthenic and get a little work out here. Then soon, we've got like an invisible buddy on our right. We're going to kind of lift our arm up and put it on his shoulder. So that's soon with the with the one buddy on the right. And then mata, we're going to take our other arm, leaving your right arm still in the air. We're going to take our left arm and put it over an invisible buddy's shoulder on our left. So we're going to have both hands out. They can hold them there for you know three or four minutes and you get a little shoulder workout. But anyways, and that'll be mata, meaning with also. So this is the 11 preposition chant moves, basically. Okay? So let's just run through this one more time. Epi, pat ourselves on our head. Peri, take our index finger and make a halo around our head. Pros, our hand with our finger pointed goes to our heart. Ace, our finger points further into our heart and our chest collapse. Dia, the finger goes through the back. And then N is in, we hug ourselves. Ek, the finger comes out of the heart. Apo. Both fingers, uh, left and right, go out, extend out from the heart. Kata, our two hands press against each other. Soon is our right arm buddy with. And Mata is our left arm buddy left. So we're with soon and with Mata. Now I'll call through them. You do the moves. Epi pari. Pros. Ace dia. N ek. Apo. Kata sun meta. Let's try that one more time. Now I'll call through them. You do the moves. Epi pari. Pros. Ace dia. N Ek Apo Kata Sun Meta. All right, practice that so you can do that little dance in your sleep. This is chant number three. Now we just want to sort out the prepositions by case and just take a look at it from that perspective. Called casing the prepositions. Under the genitive, we have apo, which means from, ek, which means from, out of the midst of, or out of, dia means through, kata means down, meta means with, peri means for, and epi means on or over. The dative comes with prepositions like en, which means in, sun, which means with, and a p, which means on or at. The accusative has ace, which means into, pros, which means to or toward, dia means because, kata means according to, Meta means after, peri means around, and epi means on or toward. And so you can see how some of the prepositions kind of modify and extend and illustrate the base meanings of these various cases. Just a couple quick notes on this elision, which we've already talked about. First of all, prepositions ending in a vowel 
often drop the final vowel when it comes before a word with an initial vowel. So, for example, as we've seen before, de emu should have really been dia plus emu through me, but the alpha of dia drops out because of the initial vowel in emu and the smooth breathing. If there's a rough breathing on the initial vowel that, of the word that follows, then the vowel is dropped and the final consonant upgrades to, in this case, from meta to meth. So meth hemeras, after days. The alpha on meta dropped, and because of the rough breathing, the tau becomes a theta. No big deal. We've seen this before. But just want to review these variations at this point. Two brief notes on proclitics and compounds. N, ace, and ek are proclitics. Do you remember what proclitics are? Yeah, they're the little words that don't have any accents. They come before the word that carries the accent. So N, ace, ek are proclitics. No accent, but the word that follows it carries the accent. Now, prepositions are often compounded with other words, especially verbs, and they're usually tagged on to the front end of verbs, and which is handy because you learn one verb, root verb, and then you can make all sorts of variations by tacking on these prepositions on the front. When a preposition is put on the front of a verb, it often intensifies the meaning of the verb. At other times, it may transform the meaning of the verb into something that means to something totally different. So, for example, dia plus blepo means through plus I see, or I see clearly. And in many of these, you can't actually add the preposition onto the meaning of the verb. You've got to combine them, and they'll combine in various intensifying ways and things. So be careful about it. I know I've got a plus sign there, but it's not real like you're adding these two things together. Perhaps a better example of this intensifying result with the preposition is ephagon, means I eat. Kat ephagon means I devour. And so you can see the intensification as a result of adding kata on the front of ephagon. And sometimes the prepositions will add direction onto the verb. So, for example, erkomai means I come. Ace erkomai means I come into. Op erkomai means I go out of. So sometimes the preposition adds a direction to the verb. And now for our vocabulary of chapter 6. This vocabulary is more difficult than the others because you've got to remember the case that goes along with these prepositions. Our first word is apo, and it comes with a noun with a genitive. And it means from. Our second word is dia with a genitive noun. And it means throw. Dia with the accusative means on account of. Our third word is ace with the accusative means into. Our fourth word is ek with the genitive and it means out of. Our fifth word with the dative is n and it means in.
Our sixth word is epi with the genitive it means on over with the dative epi means on against at or on the basis of and a p with the accusative means on to toward against our seventh word is kata and with the genitive it means down against Kata with the accusative means according to. Our eighth word is meta. And with the genitive it means with. Meta with the accusative means after or behind. Our ninth word is peri and with the genitive it means about concerning. Peri with the accusative means around or near. And finally our tenth word is pros. And with the accusative, it means two.